Hey guys! Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I really appreciate it. Um, this sermon is called More Than the Shades. Um, I was thinking about um, the whole racial tension and the whole racial thing going on in the U.S. and um, as a result in Canada too and the whole divide and back and forth and the whole the whole George Floyd situation the whole um, Rihanna Taylor situation the whole um, left and right and race and whatever and um, the Lord gave me actually uh, this title first he said call this sermon more than the shades so because uh, I said what do you mean he said he said um, Black and white aren't considered colors when it comes to art, when it comes to color schemes. They're considered shades. Um, and I said, wow, I said, yeah, that's right, I heard about that. So I did some um, research this morning. And, um, here's what I found. Just let me get it up. I hope you guys are doing well today. It's very sunny in Toronto and very warm. I was out yesterday for an appointment and it's like very warm. So just give me a second while I get my Word document up. Okay, so I was looking at the definition of color and of shades so because uh you know me i i let me say i was a former english major uh when i went to tyndale i originally went there for english but it was taking me so long that i um switched to my bachelor's of religious education but my but my first love, not first love, but one of my loves, aside from preaching, is English and writing and all that. So when it comes to um, things, I like to define them. So this morning, I did some research, um, both on Google and on um, my favorite website, uh, Web Webster's, uh, Marion Webster's Dictionary.com. So let's, let's start with the definition of color. Okay, so because I think in, um, in order to understand the word you need to define it so there were several definitions of color 
but I found this to be the best one. It says, an aspect, an aspect of the appearance of objects, and light and darks, and objects, light sources that may be described in terms of hue and saturation um, for objects human saturation in terms of brightness, color, brightness, color, in terms of brightness and color. Um, so that's color. Um, so that's the definition of color. Um, the definition of a shade is so the definition of color again is the aspect of the appearance of objects and light and dark sources that may be described in terms of hue, lightness, and saturation. Um, and shades are different tones of colors completely different ones so it said a shade refers, refers to a different version of the same color, which means darker or lighter colors. So a, a shade is basically a different version of the same color. So if you add black to a color, it darkens it. But when you add white or gray to a color, it lightens it. And um, according to Google. Um, so when, when I was thinking of this whole thing, first I was in such doubt as to do this sermon because I thought, I thought, Lord, um, people have stopped talking about it. The George Floyd murder was months ago, and all these other murders that have taken place, uh, murders are still going on, but people um, have stopped talking about it. Are you sure you want me to continue talking about it? I've posted interviews with pastors, I've posted interviews with people, and he said, Yes, because when we stop talking about it, that's when it's silence. And when something is silent, it doesn't stop. It just grows in secret. So he said, when something is silent, it doesn't stop. It just grows in secret until it bursts again. And he said, we need to stop. 
we need to continue talking about this issue. So, yes. And basically, he said, when, when you're dealing with colors of skin, it's not um, so much um, to take away from you, it's to add to you. So, if you, if you're black and you have, uh, let's say, an African or Caribbean culture, it adds to someone let, um, that's Caucasian or um, someone of white descent. It's not supposed to take away. So, in other words, we are not supposed to be fighting against each other, um, dealing with this black and white thing. We are supposed to be enhancing each other, um, learning each other, becoming richer. Um, you, you, you um, enhance me by your culture, and I enhance you by my culture. Um, I think uh, way back when, um, I honestly think um, there were as there are several reasons that slavery started, but I honestly think one of the number one reasons is because um, people were afraid that other people that were different than them would. Um, would destroy what they had built. So instead of letting them join society, let's lord over them and take them captive. So they they have to be subject to us rather than to enhance what we have. So if if you take your culture and I take my culture and bring it together, it, it creates something beautiful. Um, it creates something new and different. And, and I think a lot of people are af afraid of difference. And, that, and I totally think that um, as a culture, we, uh, as as a human culture, we need to start to um, see and celebrate other ethnicities. And I'll tell you something something interesting. Um, this morning, when I was looking for the definition of color, I found. I found that it was so hard to find the proper definition of color. Um, it, was, it was really hard to pin down. Because when you say, what is a color, I mean, how do you define it? You can define shades, the enhancement, like, uh, later dark of a color, um, like mold is a lighter shade of purple, and um, kind of a, a um, of, of um, navy blue is a darker shade of blue with with black added to it, whereas as mauve, the lighter shade of purple, has white added to it. So it enhances the color. It changes the color um, to something new and beautiful. I don't know if you've ever gone to a paint store and you were painting your house or something. Do you ever notice that there are so many different shades of of uh, different colors, 
Like, you cannot just ask for yellow. If you just, if you go to the paint store and just ask for yellow, my gosh, you get eggshell, you get all these, you get mustard, you get all these kinds of types of yellow, and that goes for any color. So, we as a people are supposed to enhance each other. Um, there, like, and I think when we understand that the colors, that the color of our skin, whether it be black, whether it be Asian, whether it be white, whether it be Indian, it's supposed to enhance who we are, not take away from who we are, not to, not to bring down who we are, but enhance who we are. And you may think I'm, I'm talking about pie in the sky things like, oh, Rachel, um, it is what it is, and if I'm black, there's white privilege. And there is, I'm not saying that there isn't, but a way to change it is to say, we, we, you give, you give something, you give something to me, to your culture, and ethnicity, and and I give something to you through my culture and ethnicity. Ethnicity. The problem is, uh, my fear is, if we define things in terms of shades, what what does that do to, to the other cultures that are in the middle, the other cultures that are not defined as black or white, the Asian cultures, the Indian cultures, the Native American cultures, where do they fit in all this? If we continue to define ourselves as, as shades and, and, um, be, begin to uh, continue uh, to discredit ourselves in terms of I'm white or I'm black, that leaves a whole populace of people out and we can't continue to do that. And I understand, I understand totally that it's a culture, I understand that white privilege is a thing and then uh, uh, we need to be like, we need to uh, stand uh, for fairness of colors. But what I think what we really need to do is when a black person loses their job for the color of their skin, we all need to cry about it. When a black person can't, you know, get somewhere, um, when they're prohibited from doing something, we all need to uh, think of that as our issue. No longer can things be a black issue or a white issue. It has to be a human issue. And until it's a human issue, this nonsense about black and white and white privilege and all that stuff, this nonsense will continue on. So, for example, if we, we suspected um, a a bank or some place of business was being racist uh, to a black person, was like being all rude and all snooty to a black person. If I were white, my first reaction would be if 
he can't eat here, I'm not going to eat here. And if we continue to do that, then the world will wake up. And then there'll be no such thing as uh, white privilege anymore because we'll just uh, all boycott the same things. We won't, like, so if, if I come in as a black person, um, and I have a low credit score and everybody's okay, and I can't buy a house, um, and then the same white person with the same credit score can buy a house, what my responsibility as that white person is to say, you know what, no, I'm not buying at this bank. If we start, if we start crying when our brothers and sisters cry, wh whether it be black and white, things will change. If we, if somebody named Stephanie gets a job and my uh, some employer for somebody named Stephanie um, gets um, a job because her resume says the name Stephanie instead of Shaniqua, we should all be outraged. We should say, if she doesn't get the job, I don't want it either. And we both walk out. If we both, if we, if we can do that, things will change. But until, but until other races say, you know what, not to just um, go when things are hot, but to do it all the time. If other races say, you know what, this is not right. If they can't get the same things that I can, I'm not using that service. And I think when we do that, we would understand that we are not just black and white. First and foremost, we are human. We are people. God made all of us. And if we cry when other people cry, if, uh, if, uh, if an Asian person cries when a black person can't get a job or a Native, um, or a Native American or whatever nationality, that's when things will change. When we look past the skin color and say, this person is my brother and my sister. Like, I don't get this. Like, um, like a lot of people, um, like when you're, you're a certain color, they expect you to do what that color does. Like, Okay, I'm I'm a filmmaker. I hope to be um, a filmmaker. So, because I'm black, people will expect me to write films for black people. And because I'm disabled, they will expect me to write films for people with disabilities. And although I love my culture, I love being black, and I love uh, people with disabilities, and I love Christians. I'm one of them. I, I love it. Um, that is not going to define who I am. I love all kinds of films. I, I love all kinds of movies. So sometimes I'll make movies with both characters white. Sometimes I'll make movies with both characters black. Sometimes... I'll make movies where one cause or one character is Asian and the other one is Indian and whatever, um, so, so on and so forth.
Um, I refuse to let what I look like define who I'm going to be and what I'm going to do with my life. I refuse. There is too much in, in inside of me to do that. There's too much inside of me to do that. And I think if we start defining ourselves by the humanness of who we are, and if we all start crying together when things are not going right in the, the Native American community, or uh, if a gay person can't get a job, or something, if we can all feel for each other as human, that's when the world will change. If we all boycott restaurants or certain establishments, or if we all say, you know what, if you can't give a loan to her as a black person, I'm not accepting a loan uh, to this for this bank from this bank as a white person. Until we do that, and until we look at ourselves as human, this thing is not going to change. And I believe that change is possible. I believe that it is definitely possible, and I believe that it, it is definitely possible for the shades to add to each other, to, you know, to, uh, to cohabitate together, to love each other, and to make this world a, not only a better place, but a more cohesive place. I honestly believe if way back when um, people had had not been afraid of each other or trying to one up each other, if we had embraced each other, if the if the white people had have said, "What can you teach me about that? Teach me about your culture." instead of trying to chain people, the world will be in such a much different place. And if we decided instead of keeping uh, black people out to not only let them in, but to join their um, talents with our talents, we would have cured, I think, every disease. We could have found cures for cancer, for Parkinson's, and everything. Because each culture brings something very unique and different. And I think just to celebrate it is just awesome. And I think that's when, when we stand up for each other, that's when it'll change. When we say, when a white person said, if it's not right for him, then it's not right for me, and then just walk out, that's when things will change. But when, when the white people say, oh, it doesn't matter, I got what I came for, forget about her, like, not forget about her, but just, oh, I'll pray for her. That's when things will stay the same. Uh, when people stay silent, we need to we need to say no. And I'm not saying in in protesting or whatever. That's one thing. But in but in little ways, when you see someone being treated unfairly, say something especially when it comes to race or gender or sexual orientation, when you see someone treated unfairly in, in small ways, in big ways, whatever ways, just say something. Stand up for what's right. Because I think what happened is because 
people didn't stand up when they should have. White people back in the 60s that knew that racial racial uh, inequality was wrong, that knew that the Jim Crow laws were uh, deplorable, they didn't stand up. They let the laws just go on because they were afraid. And, then, and I'm sure that there were white people back then who said, this is wrong, but nobody stood up and said, this has got to stop. That's the same reason why the Holocaust continued is because um, nobody stood up and said, you know what, we can't treat the Jews this way. Everybody that stood up was Jewish. If someone non-Jewish had have stood up, it might have been different. Not only someone, but whole communities of people. If the Germans in uh, Nazi Germany that knew it was wrong stood up and said, you, you know what, this is wrong, we're not doing this, we're not, we're not shipping people off to concentration camps, to work camps, to kill them, but it's because people stayed silent because they were too afraid. But I believe if group of, groups of people had them stood up, it would be a totally different story. Don't be afraid ever to stand up for what's right. Don't be afraid ever to stand up for what's right. And the Lord wants me to tell you, you're more than a shade. You're more than a black person. You're more than a white person. At uh, the essence of who you are, first of all, you're his. Second of all, you're human. So I hope you enjoyed uh, my sermon today. I really appreciate you uh, just hanging, hanging in, in with me. Share share this uh, with with someone. And um, maybe it will change their mind and hopefully it will change the world. Um, because God really wants to, to for this black and white thing to stop. And because um, he created all of us. He created Asian. He created North American. He created all the colors of the world and he wants us to not be blind to our colors because to be blind is impossible but he wants us to celebrate our colors celebrate our culture celebrate our ethnicity and not to let it take away from us but to let it enhance who we are and he wants us to learn from each other So don't be afraid to share this with with anybody you think can use it or be enhanced by it or be helped by it. And if you have a topic that you really want my take on or you want me to do a video on, uh, feel free to uh, send me a message. I'm so open to that. Because um, I want to know what's on your heart, what you're struggling with, and what I can do sermons on to help you. I'm not perfect. I don't know all the answers, but we'll figure it out together. Bye guys, I love you so much.
Serves this world for God. And all we be is just a hand of hope. Oh, sorry. I screwed up the words there. That's Love is All That Matters by Diana Ross and Brandy from the Devil Platinum soundtrack. Great movie, by the way, but. About her mother and daughter. Talk to you soon. Bye.